Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Biasci and I am VP of Immunology at Upside. Today I want to give you a quick presentation and give you a flavor of the antibody and target discovery program we are currently working on. So the problem we are trying to solve is the following. If you look at all the therapeutic antibodies approved by the FDA at the moment, about 40% of them, so a very large fraction, focus on a relatively small number of drug targets. Now, this uh, phenomenon can have multiple explanations, uh, and for sure, there are historical reasons for that. But one thing is clear, finding new therapeutic targets in a systematic manner, it's still an unsolved problem. And uh, while uh, there have been a lot of promises around genomics and the use of large data set to find new therapeutic targets, most of the promises of those approaches uh, still remain unfulfilled. Uh, we try to develop a different approach to target discovery, which I'm going to highlight briefly in the next few slides. Uh, we essentially attempt to ask to the immune system to help us identify new therapeutic targets. Uh, in order to do that, we start from the observation that inside tumors, uh, inside human tumors, you have the formation of ectopic germinal centers. Now, those are essentially biological machines which are evolved to select and identify high affinity antibodies, presumably against uh, local antigen in the microenvironment. Um, the presence of this structure has been known for uh, quite a few years, but the exact nature of the antibodies producing ectopic germinal centers inside tumor is still uh, not completely known. Now, germinal centers are uh, ex exceptional uh, biological immunological structures. The reaction that happens inside germinal center, the so-called germinal center reaction, can be considered the apex of adaptive immunity. And it's really remarkable, uh, remarkable uh, 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 biological phenomenon, where essentially B cells that have encountered the antigen can migrate in the dark zone of the germinal center. Um, here, they're going to mutate their B cell receptor, uh, and then by a mechanism that is called somatic hypermutation. Uh, when this has happened enough, uh, they migrate to the light zone of the germinal center when essentially they attempt to steal, to use their B-cell receptor to steal uh, packets of antigen from the follicular dendritic cell, which present it on their arms, after which they internalize the antigen, process it, present it, and then compete for very limited T follicular help uh, pro provided by TFH. Uh, the success, the successful clones of B cell that compete successfully for uh, follicular help, uh, T follicular help, they are licensed to become either memory B cell or uh, plasma blast, and then eventually plasma cells, which is one of the terminal stages of differentiation of B cell, and is essentially a stage where the B cell becomes a cell able to produce very, very large amount of antibodies. It's essentially an antibody factory. Now, the clones, the B cell clone that cannot compete successfully for, uh, for the antigen binding, they can go back to the dark zone where they mutate some more and then enter back the light zone in the competition. And in this way, when this cycle has happened a few times, you have selected for B cells that uh, produ may produce eventually antibodies with very high affinity for the target antigen. Um, now, because this reaction happened inside the tumor, uh, it's very likely that the germinal center inside the tumor uh, select high affinity antibodies against cancer antigen and help the intratumoral immune response. Uh, here on the left, you see the example of germinal center highlighted by expression CD21, which is a germinal center marker, and uh, although it's also expressed on other types of B cells. And the, the image you see here, it's a relatively new technique, which is um, uh, essentially allowed to see the expression of multiple genes uh, on, in the context of the 
sample slide, in this case, a breast cancer tumor, a slide of breast cancer tissue, and it's called special transcriptomics. So we can see a gene expression overlaid on the, on the special context uh, of the original tissue. Uh, now, because, because you have intratumoral germinal center, the core idea of the antibody program and target discovery program we are, we are uh, performing at UBSA is why we can't just use the antibodies uh, produced by those ectopic germinal centers to identify the antigens which the immune system actually think are important to target in order to trigger a clinically successful uh, response to against the tumor. Now, uh, before we can do that, uh, we need to we need to uh, let's say substantiate the evidence that make us think that uh, presence of intertumoral germinal center and the antibodies produced by those structures actually are important in the in the immune response to, to, to against the tumor. And there are a few lines of evidence which are gonna now uh, highlight briefly. So the first line of evidence is that at least since 2015 and probably a bit before, um, it's known that the in presence of intratumoral plasma cells, those uh, cells that produce very large amount of antibodies are actually associated with much longer survival. Uh, more so in some cancer types, such as breast cancer or lung adenoids carcinoma, then uh, the cells that usually we think as associated with better survival in cancer, which are CD8 T cells, which have a direct killing effect on cancer cells. So the presence of intratumoral antibody producing cells seems to be associated with uh, longer survival in those patients, uh, quite to a large degree. Uh, more recently, in 2020, the presence of tertial lymphoid structures, which are the immunological structures that contain ectopic germinal center inside tumors, uh, have been associated quite compellingly uh, with response to immune checkpoint inhibitors and with the subsequent survival. That was a paper published in Nation in 2020 and was accompanied by two more papers that essentially show a similar thing across different indications. And so it seems that the presence of antibody secreting cells inside the tumor, it's very important both for survival and for response to immune stimulating therapy. That's of course just an association, but let's line this up with additional evidence which are available to us. Uh, a more compelling evidence came uh, more recently in 2022, in March, when essentially uh, people started realizing, well, uh, what is behind uh, the association between antibody secreting cells and better outcome? And it started disentangling uh, the mechanism of it. So this paper show many different observations, but the one core observation that is done in this small court of uh, patient with the uh, uh, ovarian carcinoma is that not only the presence of antibody secreting cells inside the tumor is associated both with disease-free survival and with overall survival, but actually the, the number of cancer cells to which uh, endogenous antibodies are bound, so the presence of the ability of the endogenous antibodies to bind cancer cells on their surface actually it's also associated with uh, disease-free survival and overall survival in those in this small but well-characterized cohort of patients. This provides an additional level of, uh, of mechanistic evidence that actually antibodies, that, the presence of antibodies that combined to the cancer cell seem to be associated with the longer survival. Uh, and I, I want in this presentation list uh, all the all the other line of evidence, but I will uh, leave some papers in the comment section so the folks that are interested can actually dig a bit deeper in the biological rationale behind the, pro the antibody and target discovery program at UPSI. So let's assume that we are correct and that intratumoral B cells uh, and plasma cells secrete antibodies which are important to fight uh, cancer proliferation and, you know, um, trigger a productive immune response against the, the tumor, then what we do at UBSI, it's quite peculiar. 
We take, for instance, tumor samples from people that have exceptional immune response, such as people that respond to immune checkpoint inhibitors. We get select all the uh, antibody uh, encoding uh, RNA sequencing reads from those patients, from those tumors. Um, we then assemble them computationally. In the case of bulk RNA sequencing, in other circumstances, we could be using a single cell, depending on what's available. Then we computationally deconstruct the full sequence of the original antibody. And we tend to focus on the one that are mostly clonal, because if you remember what I said about uh, the germinal center reaction before, only the very high affinity antibodies, the most effective one to compete for antigen binding, they usually get expressed to very high level because they're product of plasma cells, which express a very large amount of those uh, um, antibodies. And so they are transcribed very often. Once we have the sequence of those uh, exceptional antibodies, then we produce them uh, in the lab as monoclonal antibodies, after which we have essentially optimize a pipeline to discover what they bind to, because at this point we only have the antibody. We screen them against a very large collection of human proteins, usually covering the entire human protein or the entire uh, set of proteins which are expressed on the cell surface. This is usually 6,000 6, protein, human protein. Once we get a hit, uh, we then confirm it by plasma, surface plasma resonance or uh, biolayer interferometry. So we get the full kinetic of the binding. And I am happy to report that we have been doing this for quite a few years, actually before so, uh, so much evidence was available regarding the importance of intratumor antibodies. We have now this, uh, constructed a pretty large library of antibody and, uh, and antigen. Uh, from uh, derived from cancer patient. And actually, I'm happy to report that when they do bind, they do bind with very high affinities uh, with KDs in the lone anomalous range, which is what you would predict from what we know about the mechanic of uh, germinal center reaction. Once we have those antibodies, those are fully human, derived from patients, and we use them as basis for the development of uh, therapeutic antibodies in different formats. And the, the, the original point of this program is that it's one of the very first approaches uh, to discover at the same time the uh, target antigen and a fully human uh, ready to go antibody against it. So we essentially use a reverse translational immunology approach uh, to discover new therapeutic antibodies and their targets at the same time. Um, I am happy also to report that we have published our first findings from the first four years, essentially, of this very long running project. Uh, is in bioarchives, it's currently under review. And uh, if you screen the QR code in this slide, you'll be able to access the paper and see some of the exciting results that uh, this program has already generated. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'll leave some more references in the comment section. Uh, please feel free to contact Absai or me anytime if you are interested in this program or you want to discuss this further. Thanks for your attention and um, keep going with the hard work. Bye.